Please stand as you are able and join with me in the choral call to worship 393, Spirit of the Living God. Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. And now hymn number 98, To God Be the Glory.
seated. Once again, good morning and welcome. It's a joy to be in God's house this day. It's a joy to praise God in spirit and in truth. It's a, it's a joy to serve God with all that we have, with all the gifts that God has given to us. We have been blessed immensely as a congregation and as a nation and as a world, and we come here and celebrate. One of the celebrations of our church, I'd like to have Michael uh, come forward and, and give us a rundown of the faithful stewardship that we've been having the last few months. One disadvantage of being chairman of the Board of Trustees, I'm on a lot of other committees, so I, this is my month. From the Finance Committee, at the end of February, all bills were paid, there was a positive balance in our account, and all of our apportionments are paid. Now, for those of you that don't know, apportion funds enable United Methodists to do together what no church, district, or annual conference could do alone. By paying our apportionment in full, we're taking part in many different ministries all around the world that we could not do on our own. Apportionments support outreach programs, our bishops, seminary, college students, I think our DS, and much, much more. Plain and simply, an apportionment is the amount each local church pays its annual conference to support international, national, and regional missions. So to have that paid is an outstanding thing. It was a tough winter which caused attendance to go down, but the people of Fields continue to be faithful stewards, and we continue to the, do the work of Jesus Christ through our church. Every month, there's a fifth Sunday, and that Sunday is normally designated as Tithe Sunday, although Pastor Tom thinks it should be called Fifth Sunday Offering because every Sunday is supposed to be Tithe Sunday. Next week is our first fifth Sunday of the year, and the collection on that day will go to pastor, the pastor's discretionary fund, which Patrick, Pastor Tom will speak about. The Finance Committee would like to thank everyone for their good stewardship and continued support of the ministries and programs here at Fields. Good job. All right. Thank you, Michael. We saved this, this report for the joys because it truly is a joy to stand before you and say uh, these positive things about the stewardship of the church. You know, um, I always uh, felt that money is not what should be spoken from the pul pulpit, but stewardship and faith ought to always be. Just wanted to let you know what's going on in finance real briefly. I challenged our finance committee that we have at least 36% of all that you give to the church in direct outreach mission. I will tell you we're at 34% of mission going out. That's pretty, that's very, very good. And the fact that as I had a bishop in North Carolina said every church ought to have 50% of everything that comes in to direct mission. We're not there yet, but I'm hoping we're going to get there pretty soon. Uh, the pastor's discretionary fund, just real quickly, is a, is a, uh, a fund that's confidential. Folks come to me or I hear of a need in, in our, our church community or the greater community, uh, and I will, I will offer help uh, in, in terms of financial support or uh, gas cards or, or uh, food cards and that kind of thing. Last year, to give you an idea how, how much that was used, uh, the pastor's discretionary fund uh, handed out $8,600 worth of, worth of aid uh, last year. Uh, we are, that fund is now down to $91. Just wanted to let you know that there. But that's the work of God, and that's the joy of knowing that God's work is being done in our church, through our church, and throughout the community. So that is a joy. With all those joys, though, we need to lift up the concerns that weigh heavy upon our hearts and deep within our souls. Please note those on the prayer list. I have a few that I would like to add. Uh, Lucy Mercer, who was the previous choir director here, her husband passed away last week. So we need to lift up uh, the family and friends of Jim Mercer. Also, if you would add the family and friends of Rose Sawyer, Mark Nipper, uh, Jack Stone. Jack Stone is, is a man from West Virginia that the North Coast District called and needed to have some pastoral uh, help. And so we are visiting uh, Jack up at the Cleveland Clinic. And so uh, he'll be listening to us via the web here, by the way, as well. So keep Jack in your thoughts and prayers. Also, if you please pray for Jane Fuller, 
who's recovering from a broken leg, Greg Stanfield for healing, uh, Denby Milner, Alice Vanek, and for Evan. Are there other joys or concerns of the church here this morning? Elena had surgery in the, on her lungs, and all the surgery went well. She's resting comfortably, and we see pictures of her on the Facebook because she's still down at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. But it's just wonderful. God is good all the time. All the time. Thank you. Yesterday was Dale and my 62nd anniversary. All right. Happy anniversary. And there are others. All out of joy. And not quite 62, but Kim and I are celebrating 29 years today. For our 29, life. all right. We'll work, we'll work towards the 60. Yesterday it was my honor and privilege to help serve on a promotion board um, for uh, promotion to black belt. So Phil would never be, Phil's far too humble, but Phil, would you stand up? <laughs> Yesterday, Phil was promoted to the rank of second degree black belt, and also Alan Worcester, both of these men are part of our, our karate ministry here. Alan Worcester was promoted to the rank of first degree black belt. All right. So congratulations for both of them. Well, um, so because of work schedules, we haven't been here uh, for a while. So my joy is, as you can see, I'm entering my third trimester of my pregnancy. All right. So, but with that comes concerns. So since I have 72 days left to go, um, I'm having some problems now. My blood pressure is starting to rise. So let's just say some prayers that I stay out of the hospital and we, I stay healthy. <laughs> we will keep Jasmine in our prayers and your baby. Um, if we could just uh, keep my friend Sarah Campbell in her prayers, uh, I'll put her on the prayer list. Uh, she just got out of surgery a few weeks ago, and uh, she just lost her mother to lupus Friday. So if we could just keep the Campbell Barco families in our prayers, please. Anyone else? I'd like to thank you for the prayers for my nephew Cameron. He did came through his surgery very well, and I'd like to put... Um, Lane, a new little baby that was born with uh, half a heart, and he got a heart transplant right after he was born, so he's coming along. Okay. Anyone else? Let us then bow our heads and lift our hearts. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks and praise, Lord God, for the privilege of coming to your house to lift up our petitions, but most importantly, to share and witness the joy that you have uh, enlivened our hearts with by day and by night. Lord God, we give you thanks for the privilege of coming to you every moment of our life, Lord God, as you want so desperately for us to have a deep relationship with you uh, so we may have a deep relationship with all those you love. Lord God, we, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the leaders of this church and all the ministries that are going on here. We give you thanks also, Lord, for our district superintendent this morning who is with us, and I know he... He serves a lot of churches, and we just uh, pray your watch care upon him uh, to keep him sane from talking to all the preachers that he needs to talk to on a weekly basis, Lord. Lord God, we, we do uh, gather here to give thanks and praise, but at the same time, uh, there are many things that weigh heavy upon our hearts this day, so we lift them up to you, Lord God. We know we're not worthy. We know we have fallen short of the glory of God, but Lord, even though we fall down, you pick us up, 
and dust the, the dirt off of our knees and set us upon our way, Lord God, so we, we come to you with boldness and lift up our petitions to you this day. Lord God, we pray for those uh, throughout your world, uh, your world, its leaders. Lord God, we pray for those places around the world that are just uh, besieged by incredible acts of violence, Lord God. We pray especially for our brothers and sisters in the Middle East. We pray that your, your peace will intercede in that region of the world. Lord God, we pray for our great nation and our leaders. We pray that our leaders may lead with your word firmly upon their lips. Lord, we pray for our community, our community leaders. We pray for our schools, our teachers, our administrators, support staff, our children, uh, their parents and guardians and neighbors. Lord God, we pray for those who are traveling or who will be traveling in the upcoming week. Travel blessings upon them. We pray for those who can't be here, uh, those who are hospitalized, those who are homebound, those who are recovering from surgery, and those who are anticipating surgeries and procedures in the upcoming week. Lord God, we, we, we lift all these folks up to you. Lord God, we pray for those who can't be here, those who are angry and are frustrated and... and uncertain of their faith journey, Lord God. They are welcome here, Lord, and we do lift them up in prayer. Uh, we, we pray for all those that, that you love, which is your whole creation. Lord God, we pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones this day. Especially, we lift up to you the family and friends of Rose Sawyer, the family and friends of Albert Borzanian, the family and friends of Sherilda, and the family and friends of Jim Mercer. Lord God, May you wipe away the tears of loss and exchange them for tears of joy, knowing that the one they have lost is firmly within your grasp, and there will be a day that all shall re be rejoined with them and all the other saints who have gone on before them in your house, Lord, not made with hands, but eternal in the heaven. Lord God, we, we lift up to you Dan and Cameron and Sally, for Mark and Jack, for Jane and Greg, for Lane, for Tom and Jane and Calvin, for Sterling and Peg and Jenny, for Evan, for Janet, for David, for Corey, Denby, Alice and Sarah, and all those caregivers that surround those folks seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Give them strength, give them hope, give them wisdom for their days. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you've begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a children's chat. You're Emma. You turned three. Wow, that's 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 really good. You're turning four. Really? I thought you were ten. No. Year wasn't? That's right. She can't be older than you. No, that's, that's, that's very true. Well, thanks for coming up here this morning. You know, I had a silly thought. You know what sun, this Sunday is besides a chance to, to praise God and, and pray? And we're talking all about prayer these last several weeks, aren't we? Easter. Easter's coming. That's right. Easter's in two weeks. And that's, I can't wait. Don't you like Easter? I something with our grandma. You did? You're going to dye eggs? Well, that's really good. Well, we can talk about that later. But we can, I'll tell you what, we'll talk about that on Easter. I promise you. You remind me? Okay. You got all your witnesses here. You Jesus, yeah, that's right. Easter is about when Jesus rose from the dead. And you know, when I got up this morning, I felt so good. I couldn't wait to get here to be with everybody. I couldn't wait. You know why? Because I, I just felt that joy for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is the first Sunday of springtime, too. 
Hmm? And then well, you just did. <laughs> well, uh, and boy, this is you got this is tough this morning. That's okay. I like talking too. <laughs> yeah, well. We can talk about chocolate bunnies on Easter too. <laughs> Not going to have much of a sermon, saints, but we're going to talk about Easter bunnies. But, you know, what, what I wanted to say this morning is I got up so excited to come here, not only because it was, it was springtime and not only because it, uh, Easter's so close, but because I felt this joy of, 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 of new life. And I said, you know what? I, I even dress real bright because when, when there's joy, you, you kind of dress for it sometimes. And that's kind of what faith is, too. You know, when you, when you have faith, you show it, and you smile, and there's just something good that, that you feel, and, and that's kind of what we, uh, it's kind of living prayer. We pray for God to help us and, the, and, and, the, and the offer stuff and make us better sometimes, and, and so the, the more, we, the more we, we practice joy, whether how we dress or anything, is, is, is when we get closer to God and we really get to know God well. You guys have a lot of joy this morning. I, I'm, I'm sure your Sunday school teacher is going to really enjoy that too. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for these children. Thank you for their incredible witness of faith here this morning. Bless them and keep them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming up this morning. <clears throat> The scripture lesson for today is Psalm 146, and I'll be using the New International Version of the Bible, which is in your pews on page 622. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let us now give our tithes and offerings for the work of fields in the world.
Jesus, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the privilege of coming to your house to offer praise and worship and to offer these gifts we now lay before you. Bless them and multiply them that your ministry may continue through these doors and throughout the world. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Bells. I was going to say for dinging in, I guess you're wrong in God's praise. Let's pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and proclaimed, that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. The gospel this morning is from St. Matthew's Gospel, the sixth chapter, beginning in the 11th verse. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. As we continue this series on prayer, last week I woke up with the what ifs. What if? Our prayer life that we share corporately and individually came together like a symphony, each petition building upon another to create a musical masterpiece in God's ear. What if our prayers were living and breathing testimonials of our faith in God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? 
when Jesus taught us to pray. The words he used were intended to be more than a few marks on the page or to take up space or phrases that are to be spoken by rote during worship or before bed. You see, prayer is not only meant as an opportunity to draw closer to God and faith. It's intended to be lived out. Over the last several weeks, we've considered prayer. We've considered many types of prayers. We, we considered first the prayer of Jabez, that simple, obscure, one little verse in 1 Chronicles 4, O Lord, bless me a lot, expand my ministry, lay your Holy Spirit upon us, and keep us from doing evil. And then the prayer of brokenness of Hannah coming with a, with a contrite heart before God, and then the centurion, who knew that he wasn't worthy, but told Jesus, just say the word and my servant will be healed. And last week, praying for God's will, which can be scary many times. But God's will is not necessarily a scary thing. So this morning, we start out a little bit differently. We start out with the last part of the Lord's Prayer as we think about these prayers that we've, that we've been praying about throughout the weeks because we know sometimes our prayer life can be one of joy, one of sorrow, uncertainty. But there's one common denominator between all of these prayers, all of our prayers, is our total dependence on God as our Redeemer and our salvation. The Lord's Prayer articulates in a few words what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, offering praise to God. I mean, that's an amazing thing. The psalm that was read, it's amazing. When we give praise to God, you know, our joy just overflows. When we give praise to God, I mean, how could we not give praise? When you look around, the family, the friends, this creation, this church, how could we not give praise? Then Jesus goes on, allowing, calling us to pray to allow God's will to be done through our lives. And understanding that we are a gift from God and all the, all the things that make us who we are is to be shared, is to celebrate God's will, to praise God. And as we consider this last few petitions of the Lord's Prayer, I thought about our journey a lot. When you have Christ, there's that joy. But you know, sometimes we get a little bitter, don't we? Every once in a while we get down bit. Saints, when we get bitter about life, with all the joy that God has given us, there must also be bitterness towards God. We are called to praise God. We are called to live joyfully for God. And so if we're bitter, walking around with bitterness in our heart and in our soul, we must have a bitterness towards the one who created us too. That's all part of a prayer of confession as well. Look what God has given us. Look at the blessings that God has given us. But those blessings aren't intended to be in a box. God offered us blessings so we can reach beyond ourselves, beyond this church, to celebrate the joy of believing with the world that is around us. God's will has showered us with blessing upon blessing upon blessing. So how can we not offer praise for God's blessing? I read somewhere where it, it, it was said that what if all you had today is what you gave thanks for yesterday? What if that's all you had today? What would you have? 
Man, I woke up this morning and I gave thanks. I couldn't wait to get here this morning. I got here early. I wanted to start preaching early so you could get at the donut time on time and all that stuff. I couldn't wait. Because there's something that, that God instilled in me and said, man, I can't wait to be with God's people. Imagine that feeling. Imagine those around us who want that feeling in their soul so desperately. Well, we are the catalyst that allows that to happen in our community and throughout our world. All we have is a gift from God. But here's the difficult one. The difficult one for a lot of us. Forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. I was reading the, the, the Ten Commandments the other day. If you get a chance to do that, they're pretty cool. The only, there's only one petition in the Ten Commandments that, that God spells out in a little more detail. Honor your father and mother. There's a whole big paragraph on honor your father and mother. Well, I started thinking about the scripture here for this morning. And we all know the Lord's Prayer, right? It was kind of odd to start halfway in between. But you know there's something interesting? I don't know if you ever noticed this or not, but at the end, according to Matthew, it says the Lord's Prayer, that's, all, that's okay. But then in verse 14, he elaborates on one of the petitions. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Jesus elaborated on that one petition because that petition is profoundly important for our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. There's nothing more holy and sometimes nothing more difficult than forgiving others. But we are called to do that. And Jesus says, you know, if we don't forgive others, God's not going to forgive us. Might sound self-serving, but it's not. Because what God wants is a, a deep, abiding relationship with each of us. And God, in turn, wants us to have a deep and abiding relationship with those around us. Oh, we may not all agree. Although, Steve, everybody here agrees all the time. We're, we're a big, happy family, just so you know. <laughs> we may not all agree. But at the end of the day, we're all God's children. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. In need of God's grace. In need of God's presence. And that is the key. The key is trusting God. It always seems to go back to trust. Letting go and trusting God. Having an attitude of trust. I'll tell you what I did three weeks ago. You're going to think I'm crazy because it was only 22 degrees this morning. I put away all my winter coats. All of them. I only have two, but you know, it sounds good. I put away my heavy gloves that I use to shovel the snow with. I even hung the snow shovel up. I did all that stuff. I put my sweaters away. Because I want an attitude of spring. I got pretty cold some mornings here lately. <laughs> but I want an attitude of spring. I, I, and that's why I'm dressed as I am. This is my favorite outfit. I love it. I want an attitude of spring. And God wants us to have an attitude of joy as well and do whatever it takes to get that joy, to get that celebration that, that God offers us as God's redeemed. And the best way to get that joy, and maybe that's why this for, forgive others as we have been forgiven is so impassioned, uh, impassioned with Jesus is because when we forgive others, we celebrate the joy of forgiveness. 
And we, when we celebrate the joy of forgiveness, man, that's a, that's a good, good thing. Trusting God in our prayer life is about living our prayers. Not just praying our prayers, not just saying our prayers, but living the prayer. Imagine what the world would be like if we lived the Lord's Prayer. Every last person lived the Lord's Prayer. What would happen? Saints, it has to start somewhere. May as well start here at Fields United Methodist Church. It may as well start here to start feeling and living the prayer. This morning, I, I didn't feel like I could live the prayer and have a tie on. I don't know why. For me, a tie is good and, it's a, and, it's, and there is some reverence as, as part of this office. But on the other hand, this morning, I just felt like living. I just felt like doing God's work. I can't do God's work uh, with, a, with a sport coat on this morning. I just couldn't do it this morning. That happens every once in a while. To live our prayer life is to take seriously what we are praying and to whom we are praying. It is about, again, trusting God. And celebrate the person that God has made you to be. And the life and the person that God has intended for all of us to be are folks that are filled with grace, filled with joy, and filled with the salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that's something that can never be taken away. Reading through the Bible. I was at a seminar yesterday, and, and someone said that 72% of the pastors only read the Bible when they're preparing for a sermon. I found that kind of hard to believe. I, I, I don't know how they could come up with a, with a statistic like that because, you know, even if you did do that, you probably wouldn't tell anybody. But, uh, <laughs> but if you... But consider the Bible. Consider what it says, especially God's word through Jesus Christ in the Gospels. It says to live in joy. It, is, it says to celebrate. It says to offer praise. Nowhere in the Bible, saints, nowhere in the Bible does it say that we need to walk around with our hands in our pocket, with a grudge, with our head held down. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. Jesus knows better than that. Because when we have an attitude of living our prayer, when we have an attitude of faith, it's contagious, isn't it? It's absolutely contagious. I got to quit soon because I love our last hymn an awful lot. But, you know, when you get excited about something you're doing, if you get excited about your faith, if you're not only praying, but praying with boldness, and praying with boldness means you know it so well and you want to live it your whole life. Imagine praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name and thank God you're here. Thy kingdom come, not mine. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our sustenance so we can do your work. Forgive us our trespasses so we can have the joy of, of forgiving those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation because it's easy to do. Because you give us all this joy, all this faith, we're going to get a big head. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. All of a sudden, we can start living our faith because we don't have to worry about living in our own glory any longer. We don't have to worry about hallowing our name. We're too busy hallowing, in other words, glorifying, praising God's name and not our own. That's living a prayer life. 
and saints over this last several weeks, there's something interesting that's happened. We have now over 92 people who signed those little prayer cards. Remember those a few weeks ago? They all put down the time that you're going to pray for the church every day and my family, which I certainly appreciate. You signed it. Things are happening here. There, there, there is a, there's, a, a, there's a wonderful spirit that's been enlivening souls. There's been people coming up and calling and saying, can we do this? So, why not? I had a little presentation yesterday that said, the why. You know, we got to figure out the why. For me, it's why not? Why not do it? If it's going to help someone out of their faith journey, why not do it? Why not? When we live our prayer, we're also living the story that God has given us, and each of us has a unique story to tell for God's glory. One of the gifts and incredible joy of being a pastor is hearing the stories of the saints and sitting down at a kitchen table or a bedside or in the office and hearing your stories. Listen, you're an amazing group of people. <laughs> amazing in very positive ways to hear those stories of faith. Saints, people need to hear that. There are people out there struggling who need to hear that we all struggle. And because of faith in Jesus Christ, we've overcome those struggles. You see, people need to hear that. We are called to celebrate those things that we see in another. A strong prayer life not only empowers us to accept who we are as children of God, but to accept others in the same way. Because every time we pray, we're putting ourselves on the sideline and saying, God, you're in charge of my life. I trust you fully. You do with me whatever going to say whatever the heck you want to do, but I guess I shouldn't do that with the boss in the house. Do whatever you want me to do, and I'll do it. As you live out your prayer life, and that is my prayer for you, I continue to pray for my, myself in that way as well, as we continue to live out our prayer life. God will strengthen us and inspire us to more fully trust God all the days of our life. And you know what? Your trust in God, your faith in God, your joy of believing, your celebration of new life through Jesus Christ is going to rub off on others. When I went to seminary, they told me that you're not supposed to yell hallelujah during the season of Lent. You're not supposed to preach sermons like this during Lent. I'm sorry, all those professors that said that. I think the, I think the saints need to be fed. I think the saints need to know the joy of faith. With the understanding that we are here humble by God's presence, but we need to be filled and lifted every day with the joy of faith so we may go out into the world and lift the spirit of those in desperate need of God's grace in their life. Saints, make your life be a symphony of prayer giving praise to God every moment through the witness you share with others. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Now let's stand and sing together and ask God to guide our feet.
Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.